Stanley Graham Dickinson. I was born in Welbeck Lane in Chorley, 13th of October 1923. I was the youngest of four children. You saw active service in the Second World War. When did you join up and what unit did you join? I was called up on the 17th of September 1942 and I reported as ordered to this army camp at Blakeham a couple of miles outside Chester. There we had a basic primary training, weapon training, gas chamber, aircraft recognition, usual things. And then at the end of that six weeks, we were posted to various regiments, north, south, east and west. I was posted to the Royal Artillery and sent to Plymouth, a vital naval base that had to be protected from attack from the sea as well as from the air. And when I arrived in Plymouth in November 42, Plymouth had been blitzed and Plymouth was a mess. Then followed eight weeks of artillery training, gun drills, such lights, etc, etc. And um, at the end of that, I was posted to an operational battery uh, about seven or eight miles outside Plymouth, around the coast of Plymouth Sound, on the Devon side. There was a corresponding battery. We had 9.2 inch guns, three, two such lights, a plotting room, a man post with various charts and fire control instruments, and there was a corresponding battery at Penley Point over the other side, on the Cornwall side. And then, that was 9.2, and then as you came in, there were lesser batteries, six inch, six pounders, and such lights and so on. When was the first indication you'd be going abroad, and the connection with Normandy? Well, in November 43, it was our turn to build up an invading army. And uh, I found myself transferred to field artillery. So in November 43, I was posted to 274 Field Battery, RA, billeted then in Motherwell. And what a weary 15-hour all-night journey in the blackout in November that was. And I had the galling experience on that train of going through Coppel at two in the morning, so near home and yet so far. And um, I'd only been with them in Motherwell uh, three weeks or so, when the whole division of which we were a unit, was ordered south. When did you actually land in Normandy? We sailed from, from uh, Tilbury Docks on the Thames on D plus three, that's the um, flag here, D day was on the Tuesday. And we sailed down the Thames and joined the convoy off South End through the Straits of Dover to this um, enormous assembly area of shipping, hundreds of ships, joining convoys from all over, from Falmouth to South Wales to Dover, etc. And um, off we went, and we were, although we sailed on D plus three, we were on the 7,000 ton merchant ship. And I looked her up years later in Lloyd's Register. Um, and she was built on Wearside in Sunderland in March of 44. So we must have been her first cargo. And we sailed and we dropped anchor a mile or two offshore uh, on D plus 7, that's the 13th of June. Where did you land? I landed near a little hamlet called La Hamel, H-A-M-E-L about a mile east of Aramont, where Mulberry Harbour was uh, constructed. And we, we drove ashore and we had a map reference to make for. And that night, this is now D plus 8, that's the um, 14th of June, and we simply parked up in the farmer's field that night. We weren't required to engage the enemy at that point. Were you wounded in Normandy? Yes, I was. Um, on D plus 10, um, we engaged the enemy for the first time according to the Regimental War Diary, that's 185 Field Regiment, RA, of which we were a part, near the village of Ducey, D-U-C-Y, 
Do she shout Marguerite about five miles inland and wind and firing 25 pounders for about, I think, half an hour. When there was this loud bang above my head and in that same moment this violent blow on my leg, my left thigh. And I fell down, of course. And um, I needed help, cut a long story short. And I yelled for Charlie. Charlie Stone from Devon, my closest mate in the unit. But Charlie had gone to ground like everyone else. <laughs> but soon, very soon, some comrades gathered round. And um, within a minute, another loud bang overhead and this searing pain in my other leg. And later on, next rays in the hospital and so on. A chunk of metal about the size of a large sugar lump was embedded in the shin bone. Yeah, that did hurt. And uh, my comrades put dressings on them and four of them carried me on the stretcher out of that Normandy orchard and out of the battle for Europe. Were you evacuated back to the UK? It turned out, I'm, I'm speaking with a certain amount of hindsight here, um, I was near or at one of the first two or three emergency landing strips laid in Normandy. And then um, so it meant the RAF could rearm and refuel and get back to it pretty sharpish. And um, transport aircraft were coming in and I was loaded into a Dakota. Very slow, maximum speed, not much more than 200 mph. Less than that, and they were flying in millions of tons of supplies uh, to augment what was coming in in vast amounts through Mulvey Harbour, which was becoming operational now. And a Dakota had transport 18 stretches and half a dozen or so walking wounded. And when they'd been unloaded of their supplies, they became air ambulances. I believe the first air evacuation of casualties was on D plus seven. The RAF were not able to land in Normandy until the first strips had been built. And they had 18 stretches and half of dozen walking wounded. And they carried one passenger on the way out, a young WAF nursing orderly. Little heroines they were, volunteers. They were paid, I believe, an extra eight pence a day in old money. In rough round figures, what well, that sentence in decimal roughly. Sentence a day danger money. <laughs> Little heroes they were. When you go back to the UK, did you return to the battlefields or not? No. Um, I, through various ways, I ended up at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, Edgbest in Birmingham. So, taking the lads from Afghanistan there, battlefield casualties, is nothing new to them. They did a lot of that in 1944 5. And I was there for seven weeks, and I had two more operations. How do you feel today with your own experiences and the experiences of, say, with local men serving in Afghanistan? I'm no warrior hero. I'm just one of millions of ordinary men and women of our country who did what had to be done. And um, nonetheless, although I, I'm no real soldier, I'm just a civvy, but um, I'm proud to have worn the King's uniform and I'm especially proud that although I did very, very little over there, I didn't last long enough, I'm proud that I'm entitled to say I was there. I was there when we made history. And going back now is a great pleasure, thrill and privilege. And we visit the war cemeteries and the memorials and make our active remembrance along with other Normandy veterans. Stanley, thank you very much. That was very, very interesting. I'm sure we'll talk again. Thank, thank you, you very much.